Hello everybody, my name is Tree Company and here is Nakajima Park of Sapporo. When you look at the map of Japan, the southern Japan, it looks exciting, interesting, because there are many famous cities like Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, but northern Japan, it looks quite empty than southern area. But you know, also lots of Japanese people, they want to travel Sapporo and Hokkaido. In this video, I will tell you the pros and cons of Sapporo and through that you will understand why Japanese people fall in love with Sapporo. Yes, it's time to discover this north city. It is the most popular reason for Sapporo travel. The role as the gateway to the larger region of Hokkaido and its neighborhoods are incredibly diverse. In the small town of Otaru, there's Romantic Connell and Sakaimachi Street, hot spring of Noboribetsu, where you can even see a geyser. Of course, Noboribetsu is the most famous, but there are many other hot springs. And if you want to go to the plains, there's Furano NBA. They even have mountains either. There's a lakes like Toyako and Shikotsu that will leave you speechless. There's also cliffside observations facing the sea, such as Mororan's Earth Cape and Toshoriko. Each one of them is worthy of a trip of its own, and Sapporo gives you access to them. Sapporo may have a short history of settlement, but its local food scene is various like any other prefectures. And on top of that, it's easy to eat. What I mean is, Tokyo's famous monjoyaki has a big barrier to entry. It doesn't about flavor, but appearance. Fukuoka's tonkotsu ramen, with a strong pork smell, Many people are shocked when they go to the unauthentic local shop. But miso ramen in Sapporo, which is pork bone broth, but the barrier to entry is low with the familiar soy flavor of miso. Genghis Khan is just a grilling meat and vegetable. There is no barrier at all. As for the soup curry, curry is everyone's favorite food. The only thing with this barrier is seafood, especially raw fish, raw shellfish, and crustaceans but theirs look like honest to show their own flavor. You don't have to worry about that. What the heck is this? Even you don't like this. I think uni, sea urchin, is the one of the most polarized seafood. However, if you don't eat sea urchin, that can be a good thing because it's very expensive ingredient to put it middly. It's a money pit. Anyway, Sapporo is a city, has a lot of food that is less controversial. Let's look at the map of Tokyo. It's too complicated. I can't even count how many downtowns there are. If you look at the map of Shinjuku or Tokyo Station, you will just get lost. Osaka is much simpler than Tokyo, but it's still complicated. Let's move on to Japan's fourth largest city, Sapporo. The downtown area ends with a straight line from Sapporo Station to Suzukino. Isn't that concise? For me, it's a shame that there's no little to explain but there aren't many cities that are this easy for the first-time travelers. There are no private railways to give travelers headache. Local transportation consists of subway, streetcar, and city bus, that's all. Wide area public transportation is divided into JR and highway buses. If you stay for a long time, it's a little monotonous, but a short trip, Sapporo is easy to play around with. There are over 270 skyscrapers over 150 meters tall in Japan, but Sapporo has only one, the 173 meter JR Tower. But just because they are low, doesn't mean the views aren't spectacular. From the TV tower, you can see Odori Park and the mountainous beyond. From Okurayama, you can see the ski jump and the city at the same time. And from Moyoyama, at over 530 meters, you can see the entire city of Sapporo. Nature is amazing. Tokyo Skytree, the highest observation deck in Tokyo, is 450 meters in Sapporo, where such skyscrapers cannot be built. You can just go up to the mountain and enjoy the view from that height. And in winter, the city is covered in white. In terms of skyscrapers, is a lot less than Tokyo or Osaka, but the scenery is just as spectacular. Sapporo beer is very popular, not only in Japan but overseas. To drink the beer you can drink anywhere, but in its hometown, it's not bad, but I don't think it's great. But what makes Sapporo beer as a good advantage of Sapporo, 
is the existence of Sapporo Classic. This is a limited edition beer that is only distributed within Hokkaido. A trip to Hokkaido is centered around Sapporo, so you're probably going to drink a lot of classic Sapporo beer in Sapporo. Here are the differences between just Sapporo and Sapporo Classic. First of all, Classic use 100% malt, and they use a special brewing method that takes advantage of the malt flavor, so it's got a really nice flavor profile. Normally, a good beer has a high malt content. If it has a low malt content, it cannot call as beer. It's just low malt beer as Japanese Haposhu. But Sapporo Classic is made of 100% malt. This one is more relevant to me. As a native of Busan, Sapporo gets a lot of snow. It really adds a different flavor to the city. What can I say about the snow-covered Odori Park? It looks great from the beer garden, it's great from the quiet street without people a short distance away, Jodan K Onsan is fantastic. And snowy, clean, modern, metropolitan sensibility, this is one of the Sapporo's indeniable strength. But Sapporo doesn't have to be cold in all season, it has a summer here too. Usually in the summer in Japan, you will sweaty and hot and stuff. Tokyo, Osaka, Fukuoka, all the other major destinations. This city itself becomes a steam sauna, but Sapporo, which is humid in the winter, is dry in the summer. And because it's so far north, the absolute temperature itself is lower. So it's totally different with any other major cities in Japan, not just Sapporo, but Hokkaido in general. Almost East Asia and Southeast Asia are usually sweltering in the summer. There are few dry summer places, and Sapporo is one of them. Others are Da Nang, Vietnam, Koh Samui, Thailand, and Bali, Indonesia. Of course, the difference is that those places are hot, and Sapporo is cold. This one is selfless. Ice cream made with milk from Hokkaido is so delicious. It's good in the city center, it's good in the park. You can eat at the observatory, you can eat it five times a day. Often, when there are Hokkaido food fairs in other parts of Japan, I always eat ice cream. I want you guys to try it too. But Sapporo is not a perfect travel destination. It's not without its faults. Sapporo is the fourth largest city in Japan, but that's only based on its population alone. Sapporo doesn't have a metropolitan areas that other cities have. Fukuoka is the exact opposite of Sapporo, which has smaller population than Sapporo city, but is the center of Kyushu, and even more so far western Honshu too. So the market is bigger than Sapporo. For example, the Apple store in Fukuoka doesn't exist in Sapporo. The entire population in Hokkaido is just over 5 million, but Kyushu itself has more than 12 million. So the contents of the city is made of its population and economic power. Things like shopping malls, department stores, and FEMA parks, they are definitely a bit disappointing. And because of its short history, there are few cultural assets. Otaru and Hakodate also have a short history, but they have a lot of modern buildings, so they are great for urban travel. I don't feel like there's not enough to see in there, but Sapporo is just a contemporary city. There are some great places like Suzuki no downtown and Odori Park, but in many ways, I can't help but feel that there's not much to do in the city. There are some really cool destinations around Sapporo, right? This, combined with Sapporo's lack of city content, makes traveling around the neighborhood semi-mandatory. If you only go to Sapporo, you will feel like you're missing something. What? You didn't go to BA and Furano? Didn't you visit Otaru? Why? Tokyo and Osaka has a great suburbs, but they are pretty complete in their own city. And if your itinerary is short like 3 to 5 days, you may go to a nearby area in the middle of journey. So you won't have much time to enjoy the city of Sapporo. But that doesn't mean that you can't get enough of neighborhood is in one day. It's usually just a taste of what's out there. For example, as a BA Furano tour, you will spend only 6 hours inside the area because it takes time to round trip from Sapporo too. So you can't enjoy Sapporo enough nor serve up. This disadvantage is for travelers from East or Southeast Asia. Sapporo is relatively far away from main area of Japan. It's at the northernmost of the country, so there is not much flight supply for business trip. So first of all, the basic airfare is expensive. 
but everybody wants to go to Sapporo and Hokkaido, especially during the peak summer and winter seasons. In other cities in Japan, peak season is like cherry blossom season and local festival, but in Hokkaido, it's safe to say that it's all peak season except for March and April when snow melts. So there are lots of competition, so airfare is expensive. From Seoul, it's over $200 one way. From Bangkok, maybe $400. I paid $360 from Seoul to Sapporo one way. With this, I could have traveled to Europe via China before COVID. My hands were shaking when I was paying. And Sapporo, traveling in the suburb is a must. It's expensive just to get to those places. Otaru, a small city, is fine. It's only 1,280 yen round trip, and there's no internal transportation cost. But once you get out of Otaru, everything is expensive. Noboribetsu requires Ryokan accommodation, the hot spring hotel, and the BA Frano tour cost 7 or 8,000 yen per person. How about JR Railway Pass? The cheapest 4 day pass starts from 9,000 yen. If you go to Hakodate without pass, a one-way train ticket costs 9,000 yen. It is crazy. If you want to rent a car, that's another 7 or 8,000 yen a day. And then you have to pay Japan's expensive tolls. Compared to Tokyo and Osaka, Kyoto, where you can travel cheaply, Sapporo is very expensive. Yes, this is the biggest disadvantage. Sapporo has only one downtown in the area. Whether you are a Sapporo resident or a Japanese traveler or a foreigner, everyone flocks to the Suzukino and Sapporo station when it's time to eat. So if a restaurant is a little bit famous, the wait is huge. Some restaurant has 30 minutes wait, some has an hour wait. Even if it is not very tasty restaurant, there is queue. Especially in the cold winter season, it's really hard to wait at outside. It's even more frustrating because it's not usually a fast turnaround. You will wait 40 minutes when there's obviously only 3 or 4 teams in front of you. If you're a person who doesn't like a queue, it's a little hard. Normally, you can just cuddle up and eat something else. But this is special trip to Sapporo. It's human nature to want to eat something famous in their own special travel. This is a winter only disadvantage. Sapporo is a snowy city, so there are many places where ice covered. It's better than small cities. The snow is cleared diligently, and some roads are heated. Some parts of Otaru and Hakodate are really dangerous, but still, you should walk careful not to be slipped in the whole time. And it's a little stressful. For a person like me, with a fantastic balance, it's fine. But if you're not, it can be quite a pain in the ass. Hokkaido is Japan's most popular travel destination, but people don't usually travel to Sapporo. People come to Hokkaido to ski, to bathe in hot spring, they want to see the grandeur and the greatness of nature. They don't come for the city. So if you want to stay in the budget hotel and sleep, there are lots of business hotels in Suzukino and Sapporo station. But if you're looking for a nice hotel, a resort vacation, you can find that in far away. Park Hyatt, Ritz Carlton Reserve, Hilton in Niseko, the West Inn next door in Rusutsu, Hoshino Resorts on the South Beach. Even the G7 Summit in 2008 was held not in downtown Sapporo, but on the shores of Lake Toya. Luxury accommodations are lacking in many ways. For somebody, this will be a disadvantage. There is a lot of delicious food in Sapporo, however, many of the more famous and promoted ones are quite expensive. First of all, meat and seafood, especially raw seafood, is inevitable that the price is a little bit high. Kaisendong, seafood rice bowl, usually starts from 2 or 3,000 yen. If it is a little fancier, it can easily cost 4,000 yen. The culprit is a sea urchin, uni. When it's added, the price goes up dramatically. If you just cover the rice with only uni, you have to pay 7 or 8,000 yen for a bowl. Let's go to Daruma, the most famous place for Genghis Khan. And order a drink or something, its cost is 6 or 7,000 yen per person. Your wallet will be lighter in no time. Miso ramen is usually around 1,000 yen, so it's a little cheaper. And the soup curry is around 1,500 yen, so it's not too expensive. Osaka and Fukuoka are easier on the wallet in this regard. Good sushi restaurant, they are naturally expensive in there, but the most popular dish like okonomiyaki or tonkotsu ramen, they are under 1,500 yen per person. And takoyaki, 
500 yen is enough. The more expensive mochinabe is around 2,000 and 3,000 yen. It doesn't cost much to eat the city's specialties. But when you go to Sapporo and don't eat seafood and Genghis Khan, it doesn't matter if you don't eat them, but you kinda feel like you have to eat them somehow. When you go to Germany, it's weird if you don't eat sausage, because it's a specialty. Sapporo is a city that requires a lot of compromise when it comes to food. Yes, this is it. Now you learn about pros and cons of Sapporo. Maybe to travel Sapporo is really, really rare chance in your whole lifetime. And I hope that you grab your own chance successfully. This place where I finish this video is Suzuki-no, the main downtown of this city. Uh, thank you for watching this long video and thank you again.